It is time for another edition of the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek Young and I have cased it online or inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. After the Wildcats fall 24-20 to West Virginia, the first time really this year K-State loses a game that most people expected it to win. Derek, before we go drive by drive here in segment one on the KSO Sunday Show, can I get some general thoughts from you on what you saw from the press box today here in Manhattan? Yeah, usually you go into a season, most seasons, you win one you shouldn't, and typically you lose one you shouldn't, and now both of those are covered uh, from Kansas State's perspective. Uh, they couldn't run the ball as well today, and if you look back throughout their entire season, the games they've ran the ball well, they've won. The games where they've struggled to run the ball, they have not won, and I think that's just because at least early on in this Chris Kleiman process in Manhattan, they've made running the ball such an important part of their winning formula. That's really well said. You know, before we get to the drive-by-drive, -drive, I'll give you those rushing stats. Derek's kind of talking about net yards rushing for K-State, only 122 on 38 carries. That's 3.2 yards per carry against a West Virginia defense. You know, that doesn't give a lot of big plays on the ground, but throughout this year they'd struggled to stop the run in an efficient manner. So let's walk you through drive by drive here as K-State again falls 24-22 West Virginia here in Manhattan. It's a great start for the Wildcats. So the second week in a row, 13-37 still left in the first quarter. The first play of offense for the Wildcats. Dalton shown 68-yard touchdown from Skylar Thompson. Blake Lynch, of course, adds the extra point. He was perfect again today. And Derek, not even a minute and a half into this game, K-State's up 7-0. Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of what we saw last week from Kansas State. They scored, on I think, on the third play from scrimmage uh, in the previous game, the first play from scrimmage today. Unfortunately, that would be their last explosive play on offense. I'm not a big bragger typically, but in the preview prediction I wrote about Campbell, kind of obscure receiver for West Virginia, being a guy to watch today. I was afraid of him matching up bad for K-State secondary. That was the case. He caught two touchdowns today. He had four catches for 87 yards, two scores. The first one a 19-yarder from Jarrett Dagey with 11.05 left in the first quarter. So it took very little time for K-State to score, Derek. Also very little time for West Virginia to answer and tie it at seven with 11 minutes still left in the first quarter. Yeah, a little disappointed in Kansas State's defense, at least in the first half. They had a very slow start today. And at least what they, they try to do is strategically, uh, from that standpoint, the first three or four drives, they completely scrapped and went away from. They were running more of a dime package where they only had one linebacker on the field. And they brought an extra defense back, and it was Jonathan Alexander. Uh, after that wasn't as successful as what they looked like they had planned throughout the week, they scrapped it and probably did did some things that they didn't think they were going to have to do today. So it seemed like we saw the offense kind of admit afterwards against Oklahoma State that they probably maybe overthought that game a little bit. I think we may hear a similar tone from the defensive perspective today. Now, the offense, you know, didn't do enough to win either, but at the same time, the defensive slow start, the 14 points, that's the majority of the points they gave up today. You know, you just let me right into that. It's an interesting game. Only 44 points scored total between the two teams at 24-20. 24 scored in the first quarter, so only 20 the rest of the game, the last three quarters, so you're right. A lot of the stuff that happened in the first quarter, you know, could have proved to be the difference. K-State does retake the lead still in the first quarter after another nice drive. 11 to play 72 yards. They do have to settle for a short Blake Lynch field goal, 22 yards out, to go up 10-7 with 4.43 left in the first quarter. Yeah, settling for field goals in the first half is another thing that they probably look back on and see as a critical, uh, you know, a factor in the in the game. And then just not getting off the field on third downs defensively a few times, especially in the second half in key moments. But Blake Lynch continues to probably be the most consistent part of the special teams unit. No doubt about that, absolutely. So West Virginia scores again, the fourth scoring drive in the first quarter, a game that only has three more the rest of the way. Another Campbell touchdown from 15 yards out makes it 14-10. Now, Derek, this is big, of course, because K-State gets to stop this drive, gets a missed field goal, and has a chance to take the ball back up 10-7 and go down and score more. But West Virginia gets the ball back on a penalty when K-State, I think, lined up over center on the field goal. Cole Manbeck called it out right away to his credit in the press box. They go and score 14-10 Mountaineers at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, just the first quarter, but that was probably the biggest self-inflicted wound of the day, which there were more, especially the 50-yard touchdown pass that we'll talk about later, but just something that's easily probably correctable or av or avoidable as Trey Deshaun, you know, maybe not uh, going over the center on, on, on a field goal attempt. So they go from what should have been zero points, Kansas State ball, got the momentum, uh, still a lead at that point, right? Yep, correct. It's still a lead. And instead, you give up a touchdown and what it should have been an empty drive, and now you've uh, lost the lead as well. Exactly. Down 14-10 at the end of the first quarter. There's only three points scored the entire second quarter, Derek, and it doesn't come until 43 seconds left in the quarter. So another low-scoring quarter is another short Blake Lynch field goal from 33 yards out, 12 plays, 54 yards, 440. K-State's only down 14-13 going into the half because West Virginia then misses a field goal.
goal on the last play of the first half to go to the locker room. Yeah, and something that's a characteristic of Chris Kleiman's best teams or most effective teams is those drives at the end of quarters, at the end of halves, to really you know sit on the ball, sit on, run the clock, and, and just take the the ball out of the offense's hands. But at the same time, moving the ball down the field, they end up in touchdowns. That that's probably the biggest difference between some of Chris Kleiman's most effective teams and the team that we see this year, just because they're a little bit more inconsistent, at least in converting uh, touchdowns instead of field goals. So coming up with three instead of six, another big factor in today's loss. Exactly. You talk about K-State typically being good, good under Chris Kleiman in those situations, and you're right. They're also good on the first drive of halves because the first drive of the first half, they go 68 on one play and score. The first drive of the second half, they hold the ball for, I believe, over seven minutes. Yeah, 704, 13 plays, 70 yards, capped off with a James Gilbert three-yard touchdown run on a speed option to the left instead of the right, not playing Kansas, so they go left. K-State takes the lead back 20 to 14 with almost eight minutes still left in the third quarter, but that's really it for K-State. They don't score the rest of the way, but that was a good drive for the Wildcats. Good drive and a key block on that speed option by Landry Weber to really seal that perimeter and get the touchdown for the Wildcats. And you talk about uh, being good at the beginning of games, being good at the beginning of halves. If once one wants to really read into that and say that all their points came essentially on those types of possessions and nothing really else in the middle, is that they really struggle once they get away from the plays that they've scripted throughout the week. No doubt about it. And we're not trying to say it's players or coaches. It's it's everybody. The players work right after the game and blame themselves constantly. So we're not starting that. But yeah, you want to praise the coaching staff probably when they can draw up touchdown drives on the first drive of each half. It is 20 to 14. Case it at that point, but it's all West Virginia scoring wise. The rest of the way. They do get a 51-yard field goal from Casey Leg to make it 20-17, to 17, but the Cats are still up at that point. Derek, I'm going to skip ahead to less than three minutes later, though. West Virginia scores on that 50-yard touchdown from Deggie to Bryce Wheaton in a play where it's third and 22, and he inexplicably gets behind K-State's entire secondary for what was the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, and that was the, you talked about it, and I wrote about it in four downs, but that was just a rough sequence here by Kansas State after West Virginia kicked the field goal to pull within three. Kansas State's offense trots back on the field. A quick three and out at that point followed by a Devin Ankle shank punt gives West Virginia a short field. You still at that point get them backed up into third and 22 because of some of self-inflicted wins by West Virginia themselves in terms of what they were doing penalty-wise in that game on a regular basis. But then uh, blown coverage, whether it was Wayne Jones, whether it was Kevion McGee over yeah. there, miscommunication in the secondary, they get behind the defense and it's a touchdown. Coach Kleiman wasn't even sure in postgame just yet, you know, who to blame it on. Not that you're looking for blame, but you're always curious on a play like that. K-State has a chance to win this thing, Derek. Of course, the Wildcats get the ball back multiple times after that. They do drive virtually the length of the field, the last drive of the game before Skylar Thompson is picked off. Trying to hit Dalton Schoen for the game-winning touchdown. That gives your final of 24-20. West Virginia beats K-State. The Wildcats drop to 6-4 and four on the season. This is the KSO Sunday Show brought to you by Peel State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We'll come back in segment two and let you hear from Chris Kleiman after the Wildcats fell to the Mountaineers. Did you feel like there was any element of taking them lightly because of the record? Uh, not, not, not at all. I feel like Coach Common does a good job. But, uh, it doesn't matter who we play. You know, it don't matter what the record is. We are gonna play, play them just like they're any other opponent, and uh, prepare well and practice hard and just take it one day at a time. And I feel like um, we never like overlooked them or anything like that. So it, it just comes down to the players. You gotta be ready for every team in the Big 12 because you know everyone can put up points and you know that kind of shows what happens when you come out and you. you really don't bring it early on. Uh, I feel like we uh, prepared really well. We watched a lot of film and the coaches uh, did a lot of like game planning on this team. And I feel like it just came down to the players not executing at the high level. So it's all on us. That to you was the biggest frustration after losing that game? Um, just, uh, you know, two turnovers on my part. Um, that's uh, a frustrating um, aspect. Um, something that, you know, I wish I could take back, but I also understand that's just part of the game, and um, sometimes just can't can't you know catch a break here and there. Um, you know, I just we got beat today um, in all phases, and you know, it's uh, there's no way to you know put it or explain it the right way. I mean, it's just we got beat and um, didn't play well and make plays when we needed to, and you know, I felt like we kind of took that team for granted. So um, it's a good learning opportunity for us. Um, and you know, I truly believe that that we will we will learn from this and and get better um, and you know just put things into perspective. You know, it's uh, you know it, it, it's tough. You know, anybody can beat anybody. You know, in any given week, and that's been proven in this conference time and time again. So we just uh, got to be able to you know just play four quarters. Obviously, disappointing loss. Uh, a game that. Um, 
uh, West Virginia earned the victory and deserved to win. I thought they uh, outplayed us. And all that being said, we had an opportunity late in the game to um, almost uh, steal a victory. So uh, disappointed uh, in, a, in a number of things. Uh, but obviously, we've got to move on. We've got to move forward. And, and that's what we talked about in the locker room is this one's going to hurt. And we had an opportunity to win. Uh, didn't get it done. Uh, it's our own doing. Um, and there was, you know, we're not going to point fingers because uh, whether it's a coaching staff, we made some errors. Offense made some errors. Special teams, defense, everybody made their errors today. Uh, and so we've got to come back uh, on Monday. Get ready for a, a tough road trip to uh, Texas Tech and, and uh, circle the wagons and, and uh, get the guys ready to play because we have a ton to play for still. Coach, when you get away from your identity of being able to run the ball and move the ball on the ground, how tough does that make it? And how do you, how do guys are banged up. How do you kind of? Yeah. Well, you know what? So what? Now what? We we if they're banged up, they're banged up. We somebody else. Somebody's got to step up, and make a play. But you know, we we weren't able to sustain a running game and have a good enough running game to get us into second and shorts and stuff. And you know, we had the one explosive play to start the game, which was a great play and great design. But uh, we have to find some more explosive plays uh, in the passing game, especially uh, when people are, are pressuring us and taking us out of a run. It's the second straight game. It's been tough going on the ground. Have you been able to identify maybe the culprits for these? I think it's a combination of things. I think it's it's a lot of uh, blitzing uh, up front, and and if that happens, and you know we've got to be able to decide where that pressure is coming from and hurt them uh, when they do pressure. And, and sometimes that's um, in the run game, and oftentimes it's it's in the passing game. And so we have to come up with some better ideas in the throwing game to to counteract all the pressure we're seeing on first down, especially. Uh, without talking more about the scheme than you're comfortable with, what did you see go wrong on the third point? You know, I didn't. I was on. I was more by the line of scrimmage, and and uh, I, it was a blown coverage. But I didn't see uh, where he came from. Uh, obviously, on the third and, and extra long, uh, that that can't happen um, to give up a touchdown. All that being said, that's not the play that that beat us. That was a key key factor. But there are so many other things uh, throughout the game uh, that. Uh, could help determine that fate, and, and obviously that's a big play because everybody sees it as a touchdown uh, early in the fourth quarter. But we had our opportunities after that, even. Is it a surprise at all to see Diggy be the quarterback that started? Today? No, I kind of thought he would be the guy. Uh, I thought he played well when he came in late and uh, in, in the game a week before, um, and, and I thought he did some some really good things. And uh, I think he's a good player. They have a, a a good system to get the ball to their playmakers in space, and uh, I thought they had a really nice game plan. How did you feel like Skyler played today? Uh, I thought he did a nice job. I, I, you know to to really uh, evaluate it after not looking at it. Uh, obviously, we, we want to score more points, and that's everybody. That's just not your, your quarterback position. That's everybody. But uh, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to evaluate and see where we can help him more, whether it's in the run game, uh, you know, protection-wise and stuff. But uh, I, one thing, is Skyler's a great competitor, and uh, he'll bounce back. You talked about being disappointed in a number of things. I wonder if you could just go through what well, you know, we to start with, we uh, give them an extra possession uh, on a missed field goal where we're off the field, and then up, they end up scoring uh, on a play. And then, um, you know, we're we're down in the red zone, and, and we've been really good about getting touchdowns, and, and we end up kicking a 21-yard field goal uh, rather than getting the end zone. And that's been where we've had successes. We've limited people to field goals, and we've been scoring the touchdowns. Well, lo and behold, this week it, it, it kind of flips on us. And uh, when you get down there, you got to come away with points. You got to come away with touchdowns. There are three touchdowns were all kind of third and long, and you talked about the, the, the penalty on the field goal. Did you feel any kind of lack of focus when you pulled the first half? Well. The penalties were definitely a lack of focus, without question, and, and we addressed that. And I thought we were better in the second half. But um, you know, th their one play, we, we pressured, and, and they won in man coverage. That, that's going to happen sometimes. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah, I, I th we challenged the guys at halftime to have um, uh, better focus and better discipline, and, and we did in the second half. But still, you, you still got to make plays. That's what it comes down to. This game's about uh, playmakers making plays, and, and uh, ultimately, they made a few more than us today. Just curious. If you could tell us what explanation you were given on the punt that looked like it was down. Uh, you know, that they thought uh, it, that Ross had caught it, but then 
as he was going out of bounds, they thought it crossed over the official shoulder. I, I don't know as far as, you know, yeah, I think they looked at it and stuff. So, uh, but it's another one. We, we could catch that one and make it easier on him too. You guys gave up three passing touchdowns today. You only had given up five all year coming in today. What was just the difference in well, some of those were third down, and we just uh, either don't get home uh, on, on the pressure, or we, you know, the, the one we talked about uh, on the 50 yarder, um, and then the other one was a pressure, and then they sprinted out on the third one. We, we have to get off the field on third down. We did a good job of forcing them into some uh, long yard situations, but uh, if, you, if you don't get off the field, especially down there, um, it's going to cost you. This was, this was a loss that maybe some people would say they, wouldn't, they didn't see coming. Is your message any different with the team afterwards? No, and I and I kind of caution everybody with that as far as so did you guys expect us to lose to Texas? Did you guys expect us to beat TCU? Did you guys expect us to beat Oklahoma? I, I'm not a big believer in that. Uh, if you don't come prepared every week to play, and if you do, you got a great opportunity to win. Uh, if if you if you play your tail or practice your tail off, you may not win all the time. I'm not, and I never will be, one of those guys where you say, well, you can chunk chalk this one up as a victory. Uh, we'll probably lose that one. I've never been like that, and I'll never be like, and never will be as far as every week you're going to get everybody's best shot. This is a really good league, and uh, everybody can beat everybody. And so that was, the, that was more the message at the end of the game is, man, guys, e e this league's a really good league. Make sure you're ready to play every week. Based on your week of preparation, did you feel like your team was ready? Yeah, I, I, I did. I thought we had a good week of prep. Uh, I, I really did. I didn't know what was going to happen offensively with some of our skill guys with the injuries because some of those guys didn't practice. But I thought uh, I thought uh, our focus was good, and I thought our, our preparation was good. So then it comes down to simple things. Do you make the plays? And today I thought West Virginia made a lot more of those plays than we did. And and once again, let's let's give let's give those guys credit. I, I you know even on the the third and seventeen, the kid scrambles out makes a play, does a good job. How much did their run blitz throw you out of sync? A bunch, a bunch, and we have to do a good job of of coming up with some answers for it because uh, they really, you know, they're a three down team. But they ran, they actually lined up in a, a lot more four down fronts or even fronts and still uh, just slant and angled and pressured, uh, pressured with their linebackers. And uh, we, we have to find better answers. Bottom line, we have to find better answers in the run game to give our guys a better chance to be successful. Yeah. The big play he had early, he's been big all year. Yeah. Well, how does he just keep getting open? Because he runs great routes, really precise routes. Um, he has a great rapport with Skyler. He's such a great competitor and uh, finds a way to just make plays. He's, he's, a, he's a great football player for us. Anything else? Yeah, let's go ahead. Have you had a chance to talk with Skyler about what went on in that, that last interception? I have not uh, gotten a chance to, and I, I don't know if there was pressure or if he, you know, saw something different. I, I don't know. We we ran a double move with Dalton, and um, we knew it was going to be a shot, taking the chance d down the middle of the field, uh, and 50-50 uh, situation. And their their defensive back made a nice play. Is it easy to remedy your run game in, in, a, in a week's time once you've got used to everything? Uh, it should be. You bet. We got a bunch of seniors and, and a bunch of really good coaches, and uh, we, we have to find some ways to be more consistent running the football. And, and I, I firmly believe that we'll do that. And uh, that's the challenge this week. And you know, let's we got a bunch of guys that have a lot of pride uh, in their work and in their craft. And so um, I, I'll be excited to get back to work on Monday with them. I felt pretty good. You know, like I said, I could have played last week or the week before. You know. Yeah. But, um, you know, our football team, and, and me included, we got to just get better and keep grinding and keep sticking with the process. Yeah, I mean, this is this time it was just more so about, um, you know, I feel like these past few losses, we just haven't been executing, and it's, it's been us. We've been beating ourselves, and that's the most frustrating part. Um, but, you know, like I said, we're going to find out a lot about ourselves right now. 
uh, and this team, this co you know coaching staff, and uh, like I said, we have great leadership on this team, um, great coaches, and we just got to buckle down and focus on the details more than we ever have. Um, here and there, you know, some sometimes I feel like when it didn't go well, I feel like our confidence kind of went away a little bit, but. Um, you know, we as a football team, we gotta stick together. We can't point the finger at guys, and we just gotta just you know keep play, play keep playing one play at a time. We have returned for the third and final segment of this week's KSO Sunday Show, which, as always, is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Appreciate their help very, very much. Derek Young with me, Grant Flanders behind the camera. Derek, good news today is there were a number of recruits in town. I say this stuff every time we're on the show. We don't want to give it all away. We'd love you to subscribe to K-State Online. But how many kids roughly were here today? And give us one or two names that you think are worth watching from the visit list today in Manhattan. Yeah, there was a bunch of key targets from the 2020 and 2021 classes. I bet it got into double digits off the top yeah. of my head. It seems like it probably rose. You give me nine, I can at least think yeah. of off the top of my head. So yeah. close to double digits, probably over double digits. It's nice to get 2021 running back De Devin Neal from Lawrence High here mm -hmm. for the first time. It was his first time in Manhattan. So that was a key moment, I think, and a key part uh, of their efforts in the, the following cycle, of course. And getting Coffeyville Community College off the tackle, yeah. Zeke Powell. We know Junior College off the tackle is a big need. He's the guy that they've offered that they like. They got him here on campus today. I wasn't necessarily expecting that. And of course, the three official visitors that we talked to all week, or talked about all week, and new commit, Dawson Del Forge, and the defensive backs, Amaris Brown and Damon Hill. It is a big list. Derek will talk to all of them throughout the week as much as he can and share everything he can at Case Online on the Wildcats recruiting efforts. Let's look back at this game for one more second, Derek, before we look ahead to Texas Tech and Lubbock next week. Out of things that didn't go well for K-State, what's most concerning to you that you think the Wildcats need to shore up these last two games to not to not fall and finish 6-6? Six and six? Really, the offensive line has to be better. We probably could have uh, jumped all over them a little bit more yeah. in the first segment if we had wanted to, if we could, because there's definitely an opportunity to do that. They have been inconsistent all year. They've had games where they haven't played really, really well, but I think today uh, probably is easily their worst performance of the year because not only did they not run the ball well, I felt like Skylar Thompson was getting pressured in 80% yep. of his dropbacks. He was running for his life all day. The running backs never got going. And I mentioned before, if they can't run the ball, and a lot of that's on the offensive line, they just don't win games. That's even Regardless of how many yards that they could throw for, Skylar Thompson almost threw for over 300 yards right. today. It's just they've made running the ball such a part of their winning formula that if it's not there, it's hard for them to win another way. It has been very, very up and down. Like we said in segment one, I think K-State only averaged 3.2 yards a carry today against a West Virginia defense that hasn't been great this year, to be quite honest. So like we've talked about a little bit. K-State will head to Texas Tech next week. Lubbock always feels like a tough place to play for the Wildcats and for you know most teams. The Red Raiders, somewhat like K-State, but at a lower level, up and down for sure this year. What do you think of the challenge and brief that K-State will face next week in Lubbock against Texas Tech? Yeah, you really kind of said it. It kind of depends what Texas Tech team shows up. Kansas State's been fairly consistent as a whole big picture when it comes to their performance. Uh, not, not every unit has been consistent, but they don't go clear up and down the way that Texas Tech does. So really what happens next week is probably anyone's guess, but Kansas State, uh, when they've got on the road, they haven't completely fallen apart. Right. Um, you probably think that they're going to respond well after after today's performance. And if the trend holds up, this will be a win. That they, If the trend holds up, they'll never lose again this year. Three wins, two losses, three wins, two losses. It's that simple. Derek Young just laid it out for you. I think K-State will play well at Texas Tech next week. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm like Derek. I would be stunned if the Wildcats go down there and lay an egg on the road. They haven't done that all year. So we'll be down in Lubbock. We'll head there on Friday, I believe. Derek, myself, Flanders, Logan Mance going with us. So I want to thank Flando for his work tonight on the field. It got relatively cold out here, so I appreciate him. Derek, of course, myself. We just ask you to do one thing to pay us back. Tell your friends.